So Spren existed, but not Spren. There's a lot that happens in the chapters this week. If you want to talk more about them in a less overwhelming place than the 17th Shard, join my Discord. Or better yet, my Patreon. Thank you, Doug, Matt, hope you like your matchbooks, Steve, Data Gremlin, Alec, Craig, Scotty, James, Dalinar's Butt, Moochie, Chris, Mithi Carone, Gallant Aegis, The Son of James, Lexar and Talap, and 42. Half of 42 is chapter 21. Shalon Strike got approved last chapter, so it's time to make it happen. narek has been built out in the last year and and a half. Stone wards and soul casters can do cool things. Stormseat, the former listener capital, has been redubbed Narek 4. The Parshendi had shard blades. Why didn't they reclaim more of the buildings there? They do the classic espionage trick and disguise themselves as road maintenance workers. I tell you why we're here. We're here because some diaper back downtown is being a jerk. I'm making his work on a Friday night. Am I right, Peter? Well, of course you're right, Raymond. Is he right, Ziggy? Yo! If it ain't broke. The ghost bloods are checking people with white, uh, uh, black sand. Uninvested white sand. Red Spren likes alliteration in lieu of lies. Lovely. Sigzil is drowning in imposter syndrome, but we find out the name of his Spren, Vienta. Viento means wind in Spanish. Ka, engaged to Pete of Bridge 4, tuckerizations of Karen and Peter Alstrom, uses her shard blade as a pen with a removable ink cartridge. That's cool. We've seen a summoned spren with a removable fiddly bit before. Sig's working on being more confident, and he's got a weird idea. Too bad the mink has disappeared again. Yasna and Royal Company found an artificial greenhouse sprung to life with the awakening of the tower. I've reheard stories of similar attempts at creative interior design by the sibling. Apparently it's a guest room for the Night Watcher, should she visit? Is she gonna visit? That'd be fun! A little reunion! The sibling gives us a little history lesson. The Night Watcher came from the Night, capital N, and the Stormfather came from the Wind, whom I guess we've met. The sibling was created some 6,000 years ago when the Stones wanted a legacy in the form of a child of honor and cultivation, back when bondsmiths bonded not to Spren, but to the ancient forces left Left by gods. Okay, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> First off, the concepts of night, wind, and stone had gained some level of sapience six millennia ago. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Which implies the planet of Roshar is more invested than previously thought, and we thought it was pretty darn invested. At that point, humanity had been on Roshar about a thousand years, and Spren had existed for around four thousand. Are there smaller Spren that are older than like the Stormfather. But the bondsmiths of the era bonded not to Spren, but to those more basic fundamental forces, concepts and powers given life. But then there's more. The Stormfather, who's only a little older than the sibling, remembers humanity's arrival somehow. Night left and cultivation made the Night Watcher, unconnected to people's perception. We knew that last bit, but where did the proto-Spren of the Night go? Unmade to become the Midnight Mother? She'd definitely be connected to Roshar, so escaping to a different planet would be tough. Dalinar admits he's not ready to fight Odium. Lift's hiding, and Yasna sees her in Shadesmar, along with someone else, which due to its strangeness implies it's not Windle. How do Aviar appear in the Cognitive Realm? Dalinar, for the first time, checks to see if Yasna wants assistance before giving it. 1% better every day. Or just still shaken by his bout with Adolin. Wit drops some knowledge about shards. Each god is a slice of a greater entity killed some 10,000 years ago, its power divided. Those fragments have identities. Intense. Dalinar says he met Cultivation, and tells of her charge to seek the spiritual realm and live the history of Roshar. Yasna likes the idea of seeing more visions of the past, but even Wit warns of the dangers of that plan. The spiritual realm is a dangerous, confusing place. Every event in the past still echoes in there, yes, just as the scars upon the body are a record of past wounds. However, when you travel the visions with the Stormfather, Dalinar, you do so in a very careful prescribed way. To deviate from that course risks getting lost in a place with no directions, no lifelines. A place where even I, as one of the ancients, tread cautiously. Wit was off-planet for Honor's death. Again, he cautions Dalinar against ascending. I have yet to know a person who took up one of those shards and didn't regret it, my friend. There's a lot happening here. If I could just read a few pages out loud to you, I would. The half-accurate atheism of Yasna is really interesting 
interesting, and frankly, I agree with her. Imperfect, normal people attaining godhood is much scarier than god not existing at all. Wit mentions the mists on Scadriel and the door on Cell. Then finally, Lift and the Mink show up. Or at least, stop eavesdropping. I am a drop no eaves, sir, honest. Dieno demands troops to retake Herdaz, to which Dalinar acquiesces. Guess we know where the Lopin is going in this book. Of course, Lyft is fully on Team Dadlinar, becoming Deity Linar. Storm Daddy, however, isn't. Chapter 22, the buddy cop journey continues. <laughs> the description of Shinovar being frozen in time and how Kaladin responds to the stupid and or brave plant life is delightful. Also Syl, but she's always delightful. They're walking through Aspens. Man, a Kaladin would flip if he saw them in the fall. That raises the question, are seasons more regular in Shinovar? Pando would totally have a unique spren. Kaladin tries to start a therapy with Zeth. For as ineffective as it was, honestly, it was really insightful into Zeth's character and state of mind. Boy's got extreme self-worth, worthiness, and self-forgiveness issues. No wonder he's always felt so relatable. Uh. Confirmed unmade in Shinovar that Zeth met as a kid? So that's the voice he was hearing. Yeesh, guy's never caught a break in his life. We know where most of the unmade are. Ashert Marn was partying in Kolinar, though before or after that, we don't know. Ba Adomishram has been stuck in a rock. Moalak is the Death Rattles, camped for a while in Kolinar. Nergal is the Thrill, now chilling at the bottom of the ocean. Rishafir was hiding in Urethiru. Sia'anat's been taking secrets. And Yelignar hasn't been swallowed by anyone in the past year. Chamorish, we know virtually nothing about, so that's a possibility. And Digonarthus, the black fisher, has also been unextrapolated. Who do you think the unmade in Shinovar is? The Stormfather is angry. Seriously getting Gavilar era vibes from him now. You are ruining everything. Excuse me, what? What do you have planned, Stormy, that Dalinar could possibly be ruining? He tries to tell Dalinar off in a vision, and Dalinar makes him blink. Regardless, if you look into the spiritual realm, you will see. Perhaps you will see. See what, exactly? Our shame. Our? Who... Who's us? Wit says there's a real danger of Rip Van Winkling in the spiritual realm. He tells Dalinar to do the thing to his watch, bondsmithing it to mirror wits from the Silverlight Mercantile. They're showing up more and more. Wit complains about the common cold on other worlds and political fundraisers. I assume that's a shot at nearly modern Scadriel. This could be taking place right about the same time as the prologue to Alloy of Law, if all of Mistborn Era 2 needs to happen between the arcs of Stormlight. Speaking of, if you have missed any of my Cosmere Connection series, where I dig into all the crossovers and easter eggs in various books, check them out here. My Words of Radiance Leatherbound unboxing video is almost ready, so subscribe and find out! That's not Raffo, that's Sappho. Uh...